At daylight, a man, Baum, is assigned to collect some ransom money on the train. Outside the train, his fellow gangsters follow the train by car. They are Sok, the cold leader, Ki Tai, a stammering driving expert, and Jin Sung, an ideal planner. They bring a tree with a box-shaped pot with them in the car. The kid they kidnapped is hidden in the pot. Their mission is to take the ransom money and give back the child. But the mission is cancelled because there are a lot of cops there. They know this because they conspire with a police officer named Detective Chang. Detective Chang always gives them the information they need. Baum manages to escape by taking a hostage and shooting a policeman. Outside the train, a policeman stops them and intends to help the hostage. But the hostage turns out to be in a gang with Baum. After being released, he stabs the policeman instead. Disguised as a hostage is Dong, a cold martial artist in the gang. In their base camp, they are disappointed because they failed to get the ransom. Some of them want to kill the child. However, Sok, the group leader, prevents them from doing so. They then call the only woman there, Young, whose legs are chained. This group calls themselves Day Goblins. After the incident, news spread everywhere and the police called the unsolved kidnapping case the Goblins case. Fast forward to 15 years later, in 2012, a wealthy businessman is seen being massaged by a blind masseuse. The masseuse is not completely blind. He can see very close objects from one of his eyes. Moments later, a group of masked men enters to rob the man. They are day goblins. They force him to open a safe. Before opening the safe, he activates the emergency button and tries to fight back. They then kill him without hesitation and rob his money. Meanwhile, the masseur is left alive because Sok believes he can't see. Even so, the masseur can see Sok's face because he approaches him from a very close distance. After getting the money, the group goes away, and the police try to chase them. At the intersection, the police think they were going to the left road because there is a boy who looks like he had just fallen. It makes them think that the boy was hit by the robber's car. Turns out it is Hawaii who outwits the police and helps the robbery. They lost track of them. On the way home, Hawaii meets Yu Kyung. She looks like she wants to be friends with him. He gives her one of his oranges as a sign of friendship. At base camp, the group counts their loot and divides it up. They also give it to Hawaii. They treat Hawaii like their own child. Hawaii also calls all the day goblins members as fathers. In a glimpse, they look like a happy family. In addition, the only woman living there, young, is not chained anymore. Dot in that group, Hawaii doesn't go to school. He just likes to wear a school uniform. All this time, he is trained by his fathers in various skills. He is also taught to be a sniper. Inside base camp, Jin Sung receives a call from Detective Chang. He asks the gang to finish off a family. This family refuses to move house and sell their land to CEO Jin. He is a quite powerful entrepreneur in Korea. The family is Im Hyung Taek's family. Hearing that name, Jin Sung's expression immediately changes. Detective Chang tells him to forget the past. Jin Sung looks at Hawaii, thinking about something, and hangs up the phone. Jin Sung then gives Hawaii a mission to study abroad for three months. Hawaii goes downtown. He paints people's activities at the market. Though he has adapted to this life, sometimes he longs for the ordinary life of other boys, which seems impossible for him. He also observes Kyung and his friends who are joking and looking happy. He is so wrapped up in her smile until a car hits him. Kyung looks at Hawaii's paintings and is amazed. She says that he is lucky because his parents support his passion. Meanwhile, her photography passion is not supported by her parents because they have no money to buy her a camera. Kyung then asks Hawaii to help with her artwork. He agrees to do so. She rewards him by taking a photo of him using his cell phone. Hawaii, who makes a friend outside the group for the first time, is both excited and nervous. At that time, he meets one of his fathers, Ki, who is just drunk. They go home together. Unfortunately, there is a police raid on the way to their home. They are chased because Hawaii, who is driving, is seen wearing a school uniform. They run away and there is a chase between them and the police. Directed by Ki, Hawaii shows his excellent driving skills and escapes from the police chase. At the police station, the blind masseuse does not want to give information to the police about the robbery case because he is afraid. Detective Chang, who is on duty, wants to let him go. But Detective Choi arrives. He insists on finishing the robbery case. He finds out that the masseuse can see a little with one eye. He then threatens the masseuse until he is scared. He is finally willing to cooperate with the police and reveal the characteristics of the perpetrators. He tells them that he smelled the scent of trees from their hands. Detective Chang then sends a code to Jin Sung, to inform him that the witness has cooperated with the police. Therefore, the group has a task to kill the masseur. 
who why he is assigned to shoot him from a distance. However, just as he is about to shoot, he sees a monster he had seen in childhood. Because of this, he lost the opportunity to shoot. This makes Sok mad at him. In the car, the masseuse realizes that he is carried by the group from their familiar smell. He is then killed at their base camp. Sok angrily asks Hawaii why he didn't shoot him earlier, and he says that he saw a monster. Sok promises to get rid of the monster for him. That time, Sok's flashback is seen. He turns out to also see a monster as a child. His father locked him in the basement and forced him to fight the monster to make them disappear. But that did not work. While burying the masseuse, Sok tells Jin Sung that they must accept the task from Detective Chang to get rid of Hyung Tech. They discuss how the execution will be carried out. At his house, Hyung Tech is seen having dinner with his sick wife. They are under pressure to sell the house, but he insists on staying there. The next day, the gang comes to his house. They give an assignment to Hawaii to open the front door and leave after that. As he is about to enter the house, policemen pass by and see Hawaii trying to enter the house. They are suspicious because as far as they know, the family has no children. However, Hawaii gets to enter and shouts I'm home, as if he has just come home from school. This reduces the police's suspicions. The plan was to wait for Hyung Tak and his wife, Sundia, to come home from church. But because she was sick, she did not go to church. She is at home and knows that there is an intruder. She hides and gives a message to her husband. Hawaii finds her hiding place, but his feelings tell him to let her go. Hawaii is supposed to leave after the other gangsters get in, but he stays. He feels familiar with the house. Hyung Tak then comes home, he is earlier than expected. Seeing Hyung Tak alone, Sok asks where his wife is. He admits that his wife is in the village. However, a moment later they hear his wife screaming as she runs out of the house. Hawaii helped her to escape. Seeing this, Sok is angry and tells Hawaii to kill Hyung Tak. This is out of the plan. At first, he is in doubt and misses his shot. But Sok keeps forcing him to try again and finally Hawaii shoots him ruthlessly. Detective Chang is in charge of Hyung Tak's murder case. As usual, he does take the case seriously and tries to help the gangsters. Meanwhile, Detective Choi does his own investigation and takes the case seriously. He sees an umbrella left by Hawaii and traces the buyer from the seller. At base camp, the group receives a complaint from Detective Chang because the murder was not so neat. Hawaii continues to be gloomy and stays in his room. Young enters his room to check on him. She sees the photo of a small child that Hawaii took at Hyung Tak's house. She says that it was him as a child. Still in shock, Hawaii then decides to return to Hyung Tak's house. Not long after, he hears Sungya come in. He hides in the nearest room which turns out to be a children's room. He feels very familiar with the room and starts to remember his childhood there. On his desk, he finds articles about him being kidnapped 15 years ago. He also remembers his father used to call his name, Gun Young. At that moment, he hears something from downstairs. It is Sungya who is trying to commit suicide. He runs and saves her. He then calls the police and leaves. Meanwhile, Detective Choi, who traces the umbrella buyer makes it to the Day Goblins gang's place. He looks at the plants they are selling and sees one of the plants there. It is the Hawaii tree. The same tree they had used to hide a child 15 years ago. The child was named after the tree. That night, Hawaii didn't come home. Turns out, he is hiding in Jin Sung's room and overheard his conversation about sending Hawaii away. He confronts Jin Sung about the child in the photo he took from Hyung Tak's house. Jin Sung refuses to answer. The sad and disappointed Hawaii points a gun at him. He spills to him the truth that Hyung Tak and his wife didn't want to move because they were waiting for their missing child to return. In desperation, Hawaii shoots Jin Sung. Hearing a gunshot, Sok finds Jin Sung dead and Hawaii is gone. Meanwhile, CEO Jin's subordinate, Park Chiwon, asks Detective Chang to kill Sunya. At first, he is annoyed at being ordered. Chiwon frightens him with Russian roulette and he finally obeys his orders. He hires a hitman to kill Sunya at the hospital. Just at that moment, Hawaii comes. They get into a heated fight. Hawaii finishes him off and throws him out the window. Outside the hospital, Detective Chang, who is waiting for his men, is annoyed that his mission has failed again. Hawaii asks Kyung to look after his mother that night. He cries out his sadness in front of his unconscious mother. After that, he goes to the Day Goblin's armory. Bomb walks in and points a gun at him. They fight but Hawaii loses. He tries to talk to Hawaii. He begs him to keep Sundia alive. Bomb gives him the harsh reality that she will eventually die. Outside, they hear the sound of a car coming. It is the rest of the gang members. 
Bom Su focus is broken. Hawaii injures him and escapes. The gang tries to chase Hawaii. But Ki, the expert driver, who is very fond of Hawaii, is still being soft on him. Hawaii finally escapes and endangers the lives of the gang. Ki is secretly proud of the driving skill he taught him. Hawaii calls Sok and asks him to pick him up. With his cold expression, as if his soul is already dead inside, he finally gets to face the monster he had seen. The next morning, CEO Jin receives a note of invitation with an address and phone number. Feeling disrespectful, he hands it over to his men angrily. His men come to the place early. It turns out to be the same place where Hawaii also invites the Day Goblins gang. In the midst of the confusion, someone is shot. It was Hawaii shooting them from a distance. He gathers them all in that place so that it will be easy to finish them all at once. However, misunderstandings and riots occur so that both groups kill each other. The only one who survives the tragedy is Suk. Meanwhile, Ki survives because he was waiting for the gang outside. Ki finds Hawaii's location at the top of a tower and approaches him. He really loves Hawaii. He tries to stop and hug him. However, Hawaii accidentally pushes him away. He grabs Hawaii's rifle, but he can't lift it. At the end of his life, he apologizes to Hawaii. That's enough for him. He lets go of his grip and makes himself fall and die. The death of someone who loves him sincerely makes Hawaii sad. He throws away his weapon. Sok, who saw Ki die in front of him, is getting furious. But he doesn't chase Hawaii. He chooses to shoot all the tires of the cars parked there and leaves. He has other plans. Hawaii receives a call from Kyung. She informs him that someone has come to his mother. That person is policeman Chang who intends to kill his mother. But from this, Hawaii understands Sok's plan to kill his mother in the hospital. He steals a car from someone on the street and rushes to the hospital. Meanwhile, Detective Choi goes to Young and interrogates him about Hawaii. She tells him that Hawaii is her son. It is revealed that Young is Sok's wife. When they were kids, the Day Goblins gang members were friends at an orphanage. The director of the orphanage was CEO Jin. While Detective Choi is not focused, she hits him on the head until he bleeds and passes out. At the hospital, Detective Chang ties up Kyung so he can kill Sungya. But Sok then arrives and kills Detective Chang. He then goes to Sungya's room and tells her about Hawaii's growth. He also recounts the hallucinations of Hawaii who keeps seeing monsters and reveals that he used to be like that too. In the past, when he lived in the orphanage, Im Hyung Taek often visited to play with the children. He also tried to help Sok to eliminate the monster by praying. However, the monster won't disappear. He was instead jealous of Hyung Taek because he was close to the girl he likes. The girl was young. Out of anger, Sok snatched their happiness by raping Young. When Hyung Taek wanted to help her, Sok injured Hyung Taek's leg and made him lose one of his legs. But because of the evil things he did, the monster disappeared. He concluded that they have to become a monster to get rid of the monster. He then kills Sungya. Hawaii reaches the hospital too late and finds her mother already dead. He then goes home to confront Sok. There, Sok is torturing Young for refusing his orders to make food. Detective Choi wakes up and Sok, Hawaii, and Detective Choi have a standoff. In the end, Sok kills the detective and Hawaii kills Sok. It is ironic because his son is now the monster he always wanted him to become. At school, Kyung receives gifts in the form of a painting of herself and a camera from Hawaii. The film ends with Hawaii sniping CEO Jin at the inauguration of his new project and disappearing into the crowds. Do you agree with Sok that to get rid of a monster, we need to become one? Like this video and put your opinion in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more thrilling movies like this. Thank you for watching, and see you, next time.